Could we be seeing the first signs of the luxury bubble bursting? I don't know. If you've been anywhere on luxury social media in the last, I don't know, two or three months, then you've probably heard the rumors that coming August 1st, LVMH was supposed to be increasing the prices. The first came and went, and we still haven't seen an increase. Before we dive in though, guys, hey, my name's Caleb. I post luxury and lifestyle related content every Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. If that's something you're into, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. Consider joining and becoming a member for a really low price. You get more access perks, a Discord, special meetups. Check it out. I promise it's worth it. But what are we discussing today? We're going to be taking a look into price increases and just the health of the luxury sector in general. I think that there's a lot of signs on the wall that maybe a lot of people are you know, not paying attention to, and I kind of want to unpack it. Now, before we really dive in though, like what, what's a price increase? What's the point of a price increase? Why do companies increase prices? And I think it's a several fold reason. First and foremost, uh, a lot of companies will claim things like, you know, inflating prices of materials, transportation, cost of labor, transporting the materials, I guess is not very inexpensive. I don't know. And on the other side of that coin, which is probably the more realistic side, because believe me, these things are beautiful, but they do not cost several thousand to make or produce. Like the markup on these items is already exponentially large. But the, the more, I think, true answer to that is the cachet. Making sure that the brand is just out of reach for most aspirational consumers, something to strive for. To, it builds that need knowing that you can almost have it but you want more like you you keep wanting to go back for more and I think that you know in a capitalistic society you know like being truthful that is probably the most prominent reason behind price increases however I think that you know the the desire for luxury here in the United States especially is starting to wane a little bit have we had our fill are we are we you know did we have too much cake and now we, we're, we're done? That's kind of the point that I think we're at here in the States. Several factors I think go into this. So LVMH reported a 1% drop in American sales, which is not great. I think they had originally forecasted for 16, barely eked out at 17% increase year over year. You know, historically, especially through COVID, both during and post COVID, LVMH was reporting 20% per annum in just sales growth which is an insane amount of growth. And when it comes to the luxury sector, LVMH, you know, they own everything from leather goods to liquor and spirits. They're kind of a bellwether, if you will, for how the economy, especially in different regions of the world, is approaching with their discretionary spending. So if LVMH, you know, is reporting a bit of a loss, you can expect other brands and parent companies across the sector to report similar losses. Cartier, who's owned by Richemont, uh, I think they reported 4% down second quarter and then i think caring wasn't far behind i think they were between like one and five percent and once these companies are reporting you know hey you know we're not meeting our sales expectations or barely surpassing them then the stock market and the investors kind of you know oh panic panic button tapping out i think that is a huge key factor and why they canceled the most recent price increase now don't get me wrong i'm sure we can expect another one before the end of the year here we're used to two or three big price increases a year at this point with these companies. Part of the problem, they're losing who their, their core consumer is. Like, yes, they can, they can want to be the, you know, the more aspirational, the more affluent customer. But at the end of the day, the middle class, especially here in the United States, is their bread and butter. A statement that Jean-Jacques Guioni, the CFO over at LVMH, made kind of made me take pause when I was reading this article. I I forget where I read this. It could have been on CNBC or over at Reuters where I was getting my information. So he blamed several key factors. He said he couldn't really pinpoint where this, this difference in, in earnings was coming from in the States. He did blame them on fading stimulus payments after COVID could have contributed. Direct quote, if we assume that that group was benefiting from subsidy during COVID, those come to an end at some point. So he's blaming his loss on sales on COVID subsidies. Now, also, we, we have to look to the European market. Now that, you know, a lot of travel bans have been lifted, us as Americans, we're getting back to our normal everyday life. We're not just sitting at home, you know, hashtag WFH status, you know, shopping online while we're also, you know, in Zoom calls. Now we're out and about traveling. And in Europe, they actually saw an 18% increase this past quarter. However, they, they attribute about half of that to U.S. shoppers. Because I don't know about you, but when before COVID, when I could travel a lot more, I would save the bulk of my luxury shopping to be done in Europe. You save money up front because you're not paying the 
hiked up inflated US prices. You get money back from the VAT once you leave the country. So there's a lot of, if you can afford to already be in the country, you're already planning on buying these things, you might as well save some money and just, you know, two birds, one stone, right? And I think a lot of Americans now that we're kind of back to normal are taking that approach again with their shopping. It just makes sense. Also another category LVMH to look at, Tiffany. Tiffany's rival, one of the, the rival companies is Bulgari, who has seen, you know, pretty decent growth where it's most popular over in Asia. Whereas Tiffany, who is very reliant on the US market, didn't see that. And that's also contributing to some of the financial woes over at LVMH. Now, there's a lot of whispers of, you know, an upcoming recession here in the United States, and that could also play a bit into it. People might be a little bit more smarter with their discretionary spending. Maybe I'm right, and we just had our fill. Like, I know personally, I, granted, I'm on the Birkin journey, so I'm putting most of my discretionary spending towards that right now, as far as, you know, my, my clothing and luxury budget goes. Maybe we've just had our fill, and quite frankly, what a lot of the houses, well, several of the houses right now are putting out, you know, we've had issues over at Chanel with quality, you know, their prices are skyrocketing, they're trying to beat out Hermes, but they have the quality issues, so why would I go and spend 10k on a jumbo that's eventually gonna, you know, peel or chip or whatever. So I think, you know, maybe we're just being smarter shoppers this time around. Like, maybe we're slowing down, we're taking a beat, we're saying, hey, we had our fill, I would rather travel, I'd rather, you know, buy that car, go to the lake, do this, do that, then buy another handbag. And that, that could be it too, and that is 100% fine. But it's gonna be interesting to see as we move forward through the next year or so, if sales here in the US really continue to stay stale, if we're gonna start to see, I don't necessarily wanna say a price decrease because Lord knows that will never happen, but maybe these companies will get back to introducing more entry level, if you will, pieces to, to kind of hook new consumers. When I got started, and I'm going to sound like a broken record if you've been around my channel for any minute or any length of time, but when I got started with my luxury journey, I started out with Coach, whose prices are pretty similar. Mind you, back then it was like $33 to make a handbag that sold for $400, so that puts that into perspective for you. And then I slowly built up to Louis Vuitton. I know I like to say it weird, but I bought my first LV Speedy 40, brand new in boutique at $650, I think. It was like $672 with tax or some, something crazy like that. Maybe it was like 624 and I paid six. I don't know. But I bought my first Speedy 40 at six, 650. We'll just say 650. That same bag before it was like discontinued. There's some rumor that you can't get it anymore. I think ended up being 17,000, 17, ended up being $1,700 for the same bag. And all they did different was made the uh, Chad's puffy and then added a zipper on the inside pocket. To me, that's not $1,100 worth of improvement. I think maybe they're gonna get back to introducing more like entry-level bags, simpler bags, because at the end of the day, as consumers age through and get to retirement, ultimately their discretionary spending will probably slow down and they're gonna to need to hook on a new group of consumers. I really haven't seen any of these luxury companies make an approach or an attempt, unlike Coach, at hooking Gen Z. And I think that's gonna be a huge mistake. They're slowly growing into their, their big earning years and they almost don't have a reason to buy into it. Where we end up in a year or two is gonna be very interesting, but I'm gonna keep my eye on it. And let me know down in the comments, like has your discretionary spending, especially my fellow Americans, has it slowed down when it comes to the luxury category? Is it, is it ramping up? What do you think of the prices and quality and everything else that we've been talking about for the past year? Sound off down in the comments, I wanna know. And until next time guys, stay safe, have fun. I'll see you in the next one, bye-bye.